Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. indexes. Um, you could imagine various other things. You could imagine, for example, a grep-like search engine which uh, just uh, when it's got a query it opens every document and looks in it, does a pattern match on it. And of course there are some search engines a bit like that. In fact, um, for a long time that was the default way to search email in, in um, Outlook um, and you knew it because it took hours. <laughs> to search your entire email file. Um, but essentially, all search engines use indexes. OK, so next you have a query. Um, and I'll assume that the query is just search engine. And you uh, parse that again. You, it's, you, that's usually rather simple, because it's, um, uh, in this case, just a couple of words. Um, but you might want to do some more work on it. You might want to say, uh, for example, you might want to apply a rule that says, um, singulars and plurals are the same, so you, you, you conflate those two. Um, there are various other things you might want to do at this stage. You could do it either way, that's quite, quite correct. You could, you could do it at indexing time. Um, doing it at indexing time would, would um, uh, imply that all queries had to be like that, whereas doing it at query time, you can, you can make the choice at query time as to whether you do it or not, but that's quite right. Um, OK, um, then you, uh, your system looks up the words in the index. So it says, I've got this word, this f first query term is search, and it, I've got this list of things that I got from my, from my index previously. And similarly for engine and engines. Um, and then merge these lists in some way. So, um, so we say, OK, uh, do, uh, slide one um, contains query term one, that is search in position five, and query term two, that is one of these two in position six, and so on. Um, now, this is quite an important point. Uh, what I mean by that is that the maximum length of, the, of this merge list is the union of these lists. Um, and although uh, you could have uh, some words occurring in a lot of documents, um, the, the, the union of these lists is almost always far, far smaller than the total collection of documents you have. So if you've got a, a, a web index on 30 million documents, um, then uh, it, you're unlucky if a word occurs in a million of them, but it's much more likely to occur in tens or hundreds or thousands of them. So this list is, typically these lists are um, short compared to the, to the collection size. Um, and then you score the documents. OK, so uh, I, this, this document has query term one in, in those positions, query term two in those positions. And um, it, it's looking quite good. I, I won't go into the detail of this scoring, um, but uh, just to say, uh, OK, it's got both query terms. It's, it's also got query term one in position seven and query term two in position eight, so they're next to each other. That looks good. And same again, 13 and 14. So for various reasons. Um, it looks like it might be quite a good thing, and we have a scoring system which, which, which uh, takes account of those. Um, as I said, I'm not going to go into the scoring in detail, but I will talk a bit more later about some of the other clues that might go into this process. Now, scoring is actually extremely important. And then we rank by score, which is sort of obvious. Um, and uh, then a, a web search engine will t uh, extract snippets for each of the, of the top rank documents and show them to the user. Again, I'm not going to talk about that part at, uh, again at all. So up to the scoring point, yeah. the order of the words in the query makes no difference at all? Um, uh, OK, so you could have, for example, um, this, this, is, this covers quite a multitude of sins. So we could have a system which says, I, I recognize the query or part of the query as a phrase or as a name or something. And then it would say, then it's particularly important that the two words should be next to each other. So if I say um, Bill Gates bio, okay, if it recognizes that Bill Gates is a, a name kind of thing, then it will say, well, actually, it's quite important that those two words should be next to each other. Um, so so uh, 
uh, th there might be order dependent um, things at this, at this part. Okay? Um, the simplest kind of search engines would, would not take account of order and would not take account of position, but um, um, typically most search engines these days do, do, do take account of those things. Okay, so the bag of words phrase that I used in my title, um, the, the original idea of bag of words was um, actually a little bit simpler than I've just described. It did not have the position information in the index. Um, and it's been around for a long time, um, 40 years or so, um, 50 years or so. <laughs> um, and, uh, but it's, the, the phrase is, is often used to, to, to cover a number of other things. Um, so positions which I've already referred to, so allowing the scoring to be based on things like phrases or proximity in the document. Um, and uh, some other things that commonly, are commonly used like fields or streams in the document. Um, for example, uh, if, if thinking about traditional scientific papers, we say they usually have a title and an abstract and the body of the, of the document. Um, and a match on title is likely to be a stronger indicator that it might be useful than a match on body of the document. So we'll weight them differ differently. Uh, that will figure in the scoring. Um, so we have this, this field structure. And there may be other sources of words about the documents, and I'll come back to some of these later. What is a stream? A stream is the same as a field. Okay. Um, field is what I always used to call it. Um, it's just a, f a, f a flat, uh, a, a, a single level subdivision of, of the documents um, applied to all documents. Um, stream is the, is the term used in, in, in live search and other places these days. Um, People are very rude about bags of words. Um, uh, the number of papers that I've read that began, we want to get away from the bag of words model um, towards concepts or meaning or something. Um, uh, is, I, I've forgotten how many it is. I mean, it's just absurd. Um, but it is actually a very powerful approach. And I, I'd, I'd like to try and convince you of that in this talk, that it's actually very, um, uh, it is really very strong combined with some statistical notions, which I'll um, indicate rather briefly. Um, so I'm, I'm, that will be a theme that we come back to. But I hear you say, what does it all mean? Um, in particular, what to, surely what we really want is not words, but concepts, right? Yes, OK. Um, yes, of course. But. Okay, here's on the but. Um, actually, uh, if, if we say we want concepts, really that's not true. We want some way of representing concepts. Um, there are actually many ways of representing concepts. Um, all of them are noisy or fuzzy or approximate. Um, real concepts are in our heads. And furthermore, the concepts in my head may differ from the concepts in your head probably do, okay? Um, one of the best ways we have for representing concepts is words. Um, is, this is, we learn language as, a ch as children. We learn how to represent concepts using words. It's, it's an absolutely basic skill that we have. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have that. Words are really very good. They are noisy, fuzzy, approximate, but they're nevertheless a very rich way to represent concepts. I'll, co I'll come, well, okay, so, so consider the following. Uh, we might, the, the, these, all these papers that start, we want to get away from the bag of words um, model, uh, might, might it then introduce any of these um, <coughs> concepts, if you like. Um, sort of starting at the, at, the, at the surface of language, that is words and phrases, and going down to other things. Um, if you start talking about meanings, then you probably need to distinguish between intentional and extensional meanings, but we won't go into that here. Uh, you might, uh, people might refer to subjects or topics, or in database terms, entities and relations, things like that, or in traditional uh, NLP language analysis terms, predicates, or um, Hawking, sorry, um, Dawkins' idea of memes, 
or uh, themes and reams, which is a, which is a, um, a, a, a form of analysis done by some linguist. Um, just, just in passing, uh, while I was writing this slide, I did some searches on theme, ream, and uh, both Google and Live um, thought that ream was a typographical error for theme. Um, Google said, you must mean themes, themes, and did the search on that. Live said, mm, maybe you mean themes, but I'll give you your, the search you asked for. Uh, in this particular case, Live won that, that competition. Um, okay, uh, j sorry, just, just in, case you, uh, in case you've now come across these, which you probably haven't, um, it's a form of analysis which says uh, the, the subject of a sentence is its theme. What the sentence says about the subject is, it, is the ream. Anyway, so, so we, we, we can argue that any of these is what we really want, our information retrieval systems, our search systems, to, to, to represent, to give us, to be able to search on. Um, you could say that these represent different levels. So as I said, starting from words at the surface of language, um, these, are, these are sort of buried somewhere in it. Um, there's a distinction which is often made in linguistics between syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Um, it's not quite the same as the surface deep because you can have deep syntactic structures, but never mind about that. Um, the, I'll come back to this distinction uh, a bit later on. It's quite, it's quite useful for some things that we might discuss. So, okay, so if we, if we say we really want to get down to that kind of idea, we want to, we want to not be too constrained by um, working with language at the surface, we want to get down to something deeper than that. How could we do that? Well, here are a few possible ways. Um, uh, we, could, we could, one thing we can do is index documents, pages, texts, um, with uh, some kind of semantic tagging. Um, and that's possible, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, uh, the, the current notion of tagging, as it's represented in, for example, social tagging, isn't really that. Um, it pretends to be that, but it isn't really, because what you do is you, you make up tags of your own with words from language, and that's the only way you, you understand them. Um, but that's possible, okay? Um, we could say, really the problem is that the information that we're trying to retrieve is encoded, is in text, is in language, uh, maybe we want to get away from that altogether, extract information from text and encode it in a database. That's a possible idea. Might, maybe a, a fully structured database, like a relational database, or maybe something semi-structured like XML with uh, bits of text left in it. That's a possibility. Can you convince us, Steve, that the words are not enough? I, mean, I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't know I needed more. Can you tell, tell me why I need more? I, 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 okay, that's, that's a fair question. Um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to argue that words mostly are enough, um, but, but uh, I, I sort of expect people, the, the, the kind of reaction that many people have to word-based indexing is that it can't possibly be enough because we're, we're in, we have ideas. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of responding to the opposite argument, but, but uh, we, we, we'll, we, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make this comparison. Yes, okay, yes, we will later. <laughs> Okay, well, well so, 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 so uh, the, the, lots of questions that I could ask could have been answered in the, in the database, in the, on the web or whatever the database is, um, using language uh, differently than I use it. Okay? So I could ask, um, uh, let's say, for my name, um, somebody else might search on my name, and because I'm known to some people as Steve, they might search as Steve Robertson, my, my page is represented as Stephen Robertson, um, the system doesn't know that Stephen and Steve are the same, so it wouldn't find it. Okay. There, I mean, there, there's any number of examples you can think of. That um, could be done by your expansion. Uh, it could, if the system was capable of knowing that Steve and Stephen are the same thing, and that being reliable enough. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about some of those transformations. Okay. Still, you know, I'm just still... Uh, no, uh, uh, Yeah, well, I, 
Well, no, no, I, I'm, I'm also resistant to it, and I'm going to argue against it. I, I, was, sort of, I was sort of anticipating some people arguing the other way. Uh, obviously, I got it wrong. <laughs> Yes, that's also true. That's the kind of thing, yeah. Okay. Anyway. So I, I'm, I'm okay. So this is fine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to. I'm, all of these do have a role, and there are there are circumstances in which you need to do some some deeper analysis, um, and I'm going to talk about some of them. But for the moment, I'll rely on words. Okay, so what do we want? Um, the, the, the way we, we tend to think about what we want in, in search is this idea of relevance, um, which I'm going to sort of give several different glosses on. This is the first one. Um, the notion of relevance is, does the document, page, or whatever it is, contain the right information? Um, but the notion's got slightly more complicated than that. Um, we might ask more specifically, is this document, this page, appropriate for, for my, the query that I asked? On the other hand, the query is not really what matters. What matters is whatever, whatever information need it was that I started with, or my intent in asking the query. Um, I could expand it further than that. I could say uh, my information need or intent in asking the query comes from something that I'm doing or something that I'm uh, yeah, in, broadly something that I'm doing. Will, that, will this document help me complete whatever it is that I'm doing? I could even ask it purely subjectively. I, I could say, am I pleased to be told about this document? Um, the notion of relevance that we use in, 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 in discussing this sort of rolls all these things together. Um, well, that is, there's a lot of arguments about this, a lot of discussion about it, about what should be rolled into it about, for example, if we ask for relevance judgments from users, what, how we should ask the question, um, or should we not ask the question but infer it from user actions, take it as implicit. All of those things are arguable, um, but I'm not going to go into the arguments. Um, assume that we define relevance inclusively um, in some way to include all those things that might that might affect your, your decision about a document. Yeah. I'm just wondering if, um, when you're talking about different kinds of searches, can I think about the documents as consisting of mathematical proofs or the symbols? Sure. sure. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So, so. Suppose I have a bunch of documents, each document is a mathematical proof. Yes. Yes, yes, that, that, I mean, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's a perfectly reasonable search task, okay. Um, uh, whether whether um, one, one of these search engines that I'm familiar with would be even remotely capable of doing that, I don't know. Um, that might answer Andrew's question because um, uh, you might have to, in order to even begin to answer that question, you might have to encode, it in particular, encode those documents in particular ways and encode your query in a particular way. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a fair point. Okay, assume that we include, that we define relevance inclusively, then, altogether now, what do we want? Relevance. When do we want it? Oops. Now. Okay. Um, I talked about information needs and uh, user intents in asking queries. Let me discuss that a little bit more. Um, we tend to assume that the user starts with something which stimulates them to come to a system, ask a query. Starts with something like an information need or broadly an intent and the context in which that arises. Um, and we assume furthermore that the query that we see, that query the search engine sees, is at very best a partial representation, fuzzy, approximate, noisy representation of this need or intent tip of the iceberg, if you like. And if you're puzzling about that image, just as a matter of interest, does anyone recognize it? Awesome. Sorry? Awesome. Well done. Jolly good. <laughs> um, it's it's, it's a, a section of this, uh, this uh, Edward Hopper painting. Um, just to indicate what a query looks like to a search engine. 
the search engine doesn't see this, the search engine sees that little, little, a little bit of it. Um, search engines were, uh, in some sense, originally designed to answer what you might describe as topical search. That is, documents about X. Um, but in, in web, well, search engines in general, in, including web search engines, have gone actually way beyond this. They've become, in the way people use them, um, a general purpose finding tool for all sorts of things. Not necessarily very good, um, and indeed not equally suitable for all purposes. We just had an example of a purpose for which they might not work at all. Um, but applicable to many different finding tasks and normally used as a first approach by everyone, uh, particularly on the web. Okay, so let me present two different ways of thinking about a general purpose tool like this. First one is a Swiss army knife with lots of gadgets and bells and whistles and devices and mechanisms for doing all sorts of different things appropriate to different, uh, uh, different versions of the task. That's one. Um, that's the other. Um, you all know the, phrase, the old saying about a hammer, that to the hammer everything is a nail, to the search engine everything is a bag of words. And both of those analogies actually contain some truth about search engines. Um, Search engines do have a lot of different kinds of mechanisms for de dealing with different things um, in different ways, in different circumstances, um, but in some sense, they're all rather simple. They all treat documents as bags of words. Google's success is at least partially attributable to having been the best search engine around at the time people were discovering this idea of a general purpose tool. That's not to denigrate Google in any way. Um, Microsoft's success could be described in very similar terms in relation to DOS and Windows and, and uh, maybe Office. But that's the truth. Is that more of a statement about the amount of stuff that was available to search that moved it from topical search into just finding? Right. I, I think that's part of it, certainly. Um, although um, we, we now find that we would like this general purpose finding tool to apply to all sorts of other things, like our email. I mean, I, I, I have, I, it's, it's, I search my email. It's not generally speaking topical, although sometimes it is. It's more often to do with some uh, half remembered or remembered feature of whatever it is I want to find. So I think, uh, but, but I, th I, think, I think in some sense we're, we're, we're having learnt that this is, this is a, a good way to operate for many things on the web. Um, we're applying it to other things as well. Okay, um, just a bit about um, how we might classify um, intent types. Uh, there's a, a traditional, that is a few years old, uh, web uh, classification which says... Uh, Queries are either informational, meaning inf documents about X, or navigational, meaning um, I want to find this particular page, or transactional, meaning I want to find um, uh, a shopping site or a, or a downloading site or something like that, some, somewhere where I can do something. Um, but there are actually lots of ways we can, we can uh, categorize intents, not all um, exclusive categories. Um, so some queries are for known items. I, I know this... This page exists because I've been there before, um, and search engines are, are vastly used for that particular task. Um, might be an item which I assume exists. I, I may not have been there before, but I assume it exists. Like, I think there is somewhere where I should be submitting my tax return. I need to find that. Um, maybe uh, I might be seeking a good sort of source page to navigate from. I, I, want, I want a good summary page which points me to other places and I use the search engine to find the summary page. Uh, maybe I want a factoid, a simple, a simple answer to a question um, and then I would like the search engine to give me a, a snippet which contains the answer so I don't even have to click on the, on the document. 
um, definition similarly. Um, or the, all the transactional things and the information about X. So there are many different types of, of queries which, which are seen by search engines. Um, sorry about that. Intent, get it? Uh, it? It's hard to know the intent of a query. You just see a query. You don't, you don't know what its intent is. And in fact, there are many queries which, which are seen many times by search engines, and at least some of them uh, represent different intents, different times we see them. Okay, so as I've already said, the target is relevance. We want, the search engine wants to uh, point the user at, to, at documents which the user will find relevant in whatever those, all those senses that I said. Um, but relevance is hidden from the system. Uh, so the system has to use indirect evidence. So what are the clues? Well, some of them I've referred to already. Surface features like query words in the text of the page, in prominent places, close to each other, whatever. Um, so I'm going to make a rather bold statement here. Um, I, I will qualify it a bit, but it, it is rather strong. What we've discovered um, in quite a long period of experimenting on information retrieval systems is that what really matters most is the statistics. In a sense, I'll make a bit little clearer in a minute. Not concepts or meanings, nor semantics, nor ontology, nor the deep structure of language, nor complex presentations of results, nor sophisticated interaction or feedback tools. That's not to say that those are not important. That's to say that you have to get the stati statistics right first. So statistics in this sense, what the system needs to do is to gather and combine evidence that might suggest whether or not this document is likely to be relevant to you. Relevant in the sense of relevant to the need that's hidden in, your, in the user's head. The system knows very little about your need. Typically, um, in web search, it knows two words. Three, maybe, if it's lucky. It knows a great deal about how useful clues are. It knows what documents are like. It knows how words are used. Maybe it knows what queries other people have asked and what, how they behaved afterwards. There's a lot of stuff that it might be able to um, leverage. So a few more clues that we might be interested in. Um, you all know about PageRank because, because uh, Google made such a fuss about it. Um, Google actually really did something of a disservice in, in being so bullish about PageRank and sort of, sort of claiming at the beginning that uh, its ranking algorithm was PageRank and that this was why it was so wonderful. Um, I, you, you, I, I'm guessing that most of you have some idea that PageRank is, is quality inferred from, from link structure of, of the web. Um, and it, and it, is, it, is, uh, it is somewhat useful. Um, uh, you can get some indication, rather, rather noisy indication, that some pages are better than others in principle, um, irrespective of the query um, from PageRank. Uh, but actually, the PageRank as a component of Google's or ours or anyone's ranking algorithm is it's there, but it's not, it's not a huge effect. Um, there are much more important things. Uh, much more important is the words, far more important. Uh, more, more, more words or more ways to match words. And um, the single most important thing in web search is words from anchor text. Um, you, does anyone not understand what that means? Okay. Um, so, okay, so page, page B links to page A. There's a piece of blue text in page B which you can click on to get to page A. That piece of blue text, but which is between HTML A tags, is, is uh, the anchor text. And that piece of anchor text is, in some sense, a description of page A. Um, noisy, um, fuzzy. Um, in fact, quite a lot of pieces of anchor text are just the, the single word here, or the single word PDF, which doesn't help very much at all. 
However, there, there is enough anchor text floating around in, in the web that you can, you can get, if you, if you take page A, take all the incoming links to it and all their associated pieces of anchor text and, and, and put them onto page A, you, you, you can very often get a very good description of, of the page. Um, in fact, a rather better description than comes from the text of the page itself. Anchor text is really very valuable um, evidence. Um, there are other things you can do uh, if, if, you, if, you, um, if you have a system which logs queries and clicks then you can observe when a document is clicked for a particular query and then say the query describes the document in some sense so that's the click stream um, and that's, that's useful evidence which we're just learning how to use at the moment um, and there are various other things you can do um, which I won't go into in detail um, some of this work is done here in, in, in Cambridge. In fact, you may have seen the demo of random walks in the click graph by uh, Nick Craswell and Martin Schumer um, recently, um, which, which uh, it, it was, was another way of associating um, queries and pages. Um, so there's quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of current activity is, is about, if you like, mining uh, query logs and session activity. Um, to, to, to help in this, in this process. So th that's quite a lot of clues. Um, but many people would ask, although Andrew wouldn't, um, wouldn't an ontology help? Uh, or indeed any other kind of formal syn syntactic or semantic relationships? Um, well, indeed, they, they might. Um, oh, the thing on the right is, is the New Yorker ontology of ice cream, but that, that part. Um, Okay, so, so I've mentioned one already right at the beginning, which was plur plural singular conflation. Um, uh, so in English, we don't have very much in the way of um, variations on the ending of words, but we do have singulars and plurals, um, and it's often useful to, to, um, to, to, to regard the singular and the plural of a term as equivalent. Um, however... It's, it's, it can be a little tricky, just to give an example. Um, if I say exploration of space, you all know what I mean. It's in spaceships up there. If I say exploration of spaces, it probably means some art installation of some kind or some dance, um, something like that. Um, uh, not at all the same thing. Um, uh, in fact, uh, you, could, you could regard this as an element maybe of semantics, maybe of meaning, but more likely of, of pragmatics, that is, of connotation. Connotations are different. And they're quite important. In that instance, they're quite importantly different. Um, so, in fact, the, the big web search engines, Google and us included, um, didn't do singular plural con conflation for a long time. Um, and when they introduced it um, re relatively recently, they, they try and do it rather carefully, um, to avoid this kind of problem. Yeah. That's a fair question. You don't have to be so black and white. Um, but actually learning, learning about individual words is quite hard. Um, so, I, I mean, you, you, you'd like to learn more generic things. Generic things are more easy to, to, to incorporate into the system. It, 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 it might indeed be possible to learn it about individual words. I'll give some examples yes. like that. Yeah. I mean, I think the concept of learning about individual words has traditionally been hard. Yeah. It seems like you have a huge sort of intellectual and intellectual and intellectual and intellectual and intellectual and intellectual yeah, yes, okay, so, so, so the question is how much of this context, I mean, it, 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 considering all the possible queries in which the word space could occur, um, how much of the context is important? And, and uh, uh, so th the more context might be important, the less easy it is to learn because the less examples you will have of it. Um, and furthermore, um, we, 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 need, we typically need quite a lot of examples of instances of queries to learn something about that query um, because, because, because the only... 
Yes. We, we, okay, so, so, so the, 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 the typical query distribution is that there are a, 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 a number of queries which we see a million times a day and uh, 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 some, some, some set of head queries which we see quite frequently and some uh, long, very long tail of queries which we only see. Uh, there, every day, every month, there will be queries which we have never seen before and will never see again. Um, so you have to deal with that, with that full, full range. Um, uh, and, and that's, uh, so, okay, so yes indeed, uh, there are things we can learn um, from, there are things we can learn from frequent queries about those frequent queries. There are some things we learn by generalizing across them. Let, let me just give an example just, just, just to show you. Um, okay, I was going to say synonyms might be useful, but true synonyms are, are rather rare. Um, but here's an example which actually does come from learning. Um, so, so uh, we say, um, we, we observe that uh, Bill Gates' bio and Bill Gates' biography um, clearly mean the same thing because people ask both kinds of queries. Both of those queries we see, we have seen a number of times and we've seen people clicking on documents as a result and they click on the same documents, okay? Um, so we, we do that for Bill Gates' biography, okay? We can do that for um, Barack Obama biography, okay? Um, and then we can, we can maybe generalize to name something might be a name, biography. Um, uh, and then, then it'll apply to a whole host of, of queries which we only ever see once because there are some people who's, who, who don't get, whose biographies don't get asked for very often, okay? Like yours and mine, probably. Um, when, when you're doing the learning, of course, you can make that bind the two bind mm. one context and probably biology in another. Right. How, how do you do that without doing something desperately naive like comparing every pair of words in every document, which is just huge? Uh, yes, yes. So, 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 th this, so, so in some sense, um, the, the query log, although the query log is quite large, is, is more tractable than the documents um, and, and because queries themselves are shorter. Uh, there's a lot more you can do. So, so th this, this is actually another demonstration of, of Nick's, which has come from, from, the, quer from the query log. Um, but uh, uh, sort, of, sort of working out how you can learn rules that might be specific or might be general is, is actually a, a little tricky. I mean, th there, there are ways to do it, and we are doing so. Okay. Um, let me talk about uh, an, an environment which does use uh, a formal ontology um, which uh, successfully in search. So MESH, which is, stands for medical subject headings, um, is used in, in um, PubMed, which is the uh, database of research literature in medicine um, constructed by the National Library of Medicine in the States. And um, MESH, uh, is, is, a, is a system of, um, uh, subject heading is, is the t sort of traditional term, but it's a, it's a, it's a, you might describe it as a, a thesaurus or a taxonomy or an ontology. It, it satisfies all of those in some sense. Um, and uh, it's been around for a long time. It's been, it's been developed, it's taken a long time to develop. Um, it's been around for at least 50 years. Um, when I was working with it in the 80s, it was in a book which was about an inch thick. Um, it's no longer published as a book. It's, you, can, you can access it on the web. It's, it's a, a, a taxonomy for medicine. Um, it's, it's a very useful device. It's also a very expensive device. It requires extensive expert human effort, first of all in, ma in maintaining the ontology, which is obviously changing all the time, Secondly, in indexing these research papers using the ontology. And thirdly, in constructing searches. Um, if you know something about MESH um, and you want to do a medical literature, um, medical research literature search, um, it can be extremely useful. It can get you things which you could not get by plain, ordinary word search. Um, and filter out things which you would have to, which you'd have to filter out by, by hand with plain ordinary word search. Um, it does, like any ontology, it does encode some set of assumptions. 
some way of looking at the world. In fact, what it encodes is, if you like, standard Western medicine way of looking at the world. Um, as a result, it works better in some domains of medicine than in others. It does not work so well in psychiatry, for example, because psychiatry just doesn't fit Western model of medicine so well. So it's, it's really good, it's really expensive, um, and uh, it only works in some domains. Um, in case you thought search engines were invented for the web, they weren't. Um, search engines are at least two and a half millennia old. Um, I, I, I won't go into this slide in detail, but just to point out, this is a, a Holderist-style punch card sorter, mechanical sorter. Um, these devices were used for information retrieval in the 1930s. In fact, from the 1930s to about the 1960s, surprisingly. Um, but anyway, um, word-based approaches in the sense uh, in which I've been describing began in the 1960s. Um, at present, we have, as I said right at the beginning, an, all sorts of different environments in which um, search engines operate, in which we have search engines and, we, and use them. Um, in some sense, on the whole, these other environments lag behind web search, which is a little surprising in some ways, because web search is on such a huge scale, you'd expect it to be more difficult. Um, but actually, web search is easy. Um, in some ways, uh, which I'll indicate some of, web search is easier than, let's say, enterprise search. So here are some of them. First of all, uh, we have anchors, and as I've already said, anchor text is really a very valuable clue, clue for retrieving documents. Textual descriptions of pages by other people, other than the original author. Um, we have usage. Um, this, is, this is the domain which is most active, res actively researched at the moment. We have millions of people searching and clicking and, and changing their queries and doing all sorts of stuff, which we can mine for really valuable information. And finally, we have scale. We have billions of documents. Um, and that's, that might seem a little odd. Why is scale an advantage? Well, actually, it's a consequence of the statistics. Let me... Um, so on the list of differences, you haven't mentioned the group structure. You're saying that you're taking a percentage of the group structure. I, 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 I haven't. Um, I mean, the link structure is implicit in, in, in the anchor text. Uh, uh, so, it's so, different, right? It's different. Sorry? It's a different page, right? It wasn't the anchor text. Uh, PageRank doesn't use anchor text. No, 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 that's exactly right. Um, so, so, yeah, uh, I mean, th there, are, there are a number of other differences. You're quite right. Link structure is, is, is one of them, and uh, PageRank does, does, does make some difference, yeah. yeah. Uh, there, there, are, there are a number of other differences. I'm just concentrating on these three. Um, just let me... Um, uh, to some of you, this may be intuitively obvious, and to others, it may not be, but I just want to go through this, this um, thought experiment. So... So what I'm arguing is that, is that um, it's easier to search in a large collection than in a small collection. And just for this, for this illustration of this, of this argument, I'm going to make these simplifying assumptions. First of all, that the user only ever looks at the top five documents, which is actually a fair description of most web search. Um, secondly, that the user need is, is well, uh, maybe informational, but at least there, are, there may be multiple good documents in the collection. Um, and th finally, that scale is just a matter of sampling, which it obviously isn't. I mean, enterprise is not a sample of the web, but never mind, just, just for the sake of argument, let's say this. Okay, so the scenario is this. Do a search in a, in a large collection. Uh, user does a search, looks at the top five, um, and then we say, let's, let's take a smaller collection by sampling. So we reduce the collection, replace it with a 1% sample, reduce it by a factor of 100. User does the same search, looks at the top five. Okay, so in order to compare uh, these two situations, um, I'm going to reverse the order of the sampling and the search. Rough, roughly equivalent, I could make an exact equivalent, but it doesn't matter. Roughly equivalent is to take top 500 of the original search and randomly sample five from them. So uh, the, 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 the search on the reduced collection is like taking the top 500 of the search on the original collection and randomly sampling five from them. And if you've ever paged down a lot of search pages of search results, um, you probably 
it's probably quite clear to you that as a general rule, not always, but as a general rule, if you haven't found what you want in the first five, you won't find it at all in, in the next 495. Uh, user is likely to find the second result much worse than the first. Uh, so there is, some, there is some advantage in the scale of the web, um, which, which is reflected in the fact that it seems to be easier. I, c I could make um, sort of more linguistically oriented arguments for the same point. Um, it's, it seems to be a fairly strong result. Okay, I'm arguing that text search engine has a central role, has acquired itself a central role as a basic general purpose, first port of call finding device on the web and elsewhere. Um, there are lots of people who would like to do semantic search. It's an elusive idea. And actually, word search encapsulates a great deal of semantics already. Um, what's more, it, does, it combines that with pragmatics, with the, uh, with the sort of usage and, and connotation aspects um, of language, uh, which formal semantic structures tend not to do. And it does so in a way that's really hard to improve on and actually easy to mess up. Uh, we need different kinds of search engines for different purposes, some of which, like the medical example that I talked about, will have explicit semantic elements. We also need general purpose device, um, and we can be moderately clever about helping users in various ways with these general purpose devices. Thank you.